This is Chuck Huber, the voice of Android 17. You're listening to Anime Seekers. You better be, or I'm coming for you. Dragon of the Darkness, flame! Toku Secrets is a podcast run by the Anime Secrets website. Check us out at AnimeSecrets.org for more anime, video game, tokusatsu content. Remember to follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts today. Hey guys, I'm Hunter Dino. I'm your pink Dino Fury Power Ranger and your red Cosmic Fury Power Ranger, and you're listening to Toku Secrets Podcast. Welcome to Toku Secrets. Join us as we journey into the marvelous world of Super Sentai, Kamen Rider, Power Rangers, and many other Tokusatsu. Get ready for the adventure of a lifetime. It's Morphin Time! Link to the Morphin. I'm Nathan Desai, the dazzling adventurer, Vulcan Silk. I'm Patrick Allen, I'm Shinkin Red. And I'm Ridwan Merkin. Go Kyle Red. And I'm Anthony Davis. Also known as Cure You Green. And, and we're Toku Secrets. Secrets. Let's get ready to rumble. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Toku Secrets podcast presented by AnimeSecrets.org. And today, at long last, uh, the big event that we've been hyping up, uh, we've, we've been wanting to do this for a while now. We finally get an opportunity. We are going to be doing a comparison between a Power Ranger season and its Sentai counterpart. In this case, uh, we just reviewed Mirai Sentai Time Ranger in depth, and we did a uh, we did an entire video's worth of a Power Rangers Time Force review. So now it is time to figure out once and for all which of these series is the best. Because as everybody knows, the Toku Secrets podcast is the supreme arbiter of what is good and what is bad in the world of Tokusatsu. You're damn playing. right we are. <laughs> <laughs> Our it, judgment Twitter. will be fine. Suck it, Toku Twitter. <laughs> we matter more than you guys. Yes. All right. So uh, to kind of um, so to go over this, uh, to kind of go over the rules uh, for those who uh, have not uh, been here. So we have a scoreboard here that uh, I put together via Microsoft Excel. So. We are going to go over each of the subjects, and uh, each of us is going to be allowed one vote. Now, this wasn't the original um, thing that I intended. Uh, I, I originally said, like, one vote, one vote, but I'm going to allow us to split our vote. So let's say that, like, somebody decides, I like the Time Force theme, but I also like the Time Ranger theme. You can split your vote down the middle. Uh, but it's one person, one vote, and... At the end, you know, whoever has the most points ultimately wins. So now, of course, we can't cover all these things because, like, best suits and, like, uh, best suits, I mean, they both have the same suit. So this isn't going to be uh, – this Yeah, is I was about to reserved. ask what that was there for. <laughs> no, we're yeah. going to we're gonna give them both four points for best suit. That's a gimme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, unless, yeah, I, I just keep unless, this here and – I just keep this here for when we're going to be doing another – thing where we pit two Power Ranger seasons or two Sentais against each now, other. Now, what you could also do <coughs> is we could include the Battleizer. But there is no Battleizer for time, for time Ranger. Exactly. Yeah, but that would be under miscellaneous, dude. I know. <laughs> so, so he just, he wants to, he, I think he's just messing with you, dude. I think he just wanted I, to have more points to Yeah, I know, course. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, with that said, so here are all the subjects um, that we're going to be doing. Uh, we have best morphing sequence, best theme song, best original soundtrack. So that's just for the visuals and music. Then we're going to be doing best story, best villains, best supporting cast, and then best ra rangers from red, blue, yellow, in this case, in this case, and sixth. And for miscellaneous, it's just where, you know, at the end, if like anybody wants to give a, uh, you know, a different, you know, just something for like, you know, I think something should be shouted out to in Time Force over Time Ranger, then we'll, you know, give a shout out to that. So that's about it. It's one person, one vote. So, you know, this is all fair. And again, people can split their votes. So it's pretty straightforward. And, and then at uh, the end, we're going to have our time dream team where we take the best of the best and make our own dream team where maybe 
Time Force Red will be teaming up with Time Force Blue, for example. Spoilers for what's going to happen, but yeah, you know, totally. we're going to have a dream team later, and we're going to post, like, maybe I'll try and post a photo of that. Yeah. And uh, everybody is going to be allowed equal time to make their case. Okay, yeah. Okay, because, uh, you know, we're going to be fair here. So, uh, with that said, uh, you know, we're done uh, talking about the rules. So, what is play? Token. Let's play. get ready to rumble, dang it. Yep. <laughs> All right, so like I said, we're not going to be doing uh, best suits because you know that that's not yeah. in this case. So uh, let's uh, jump right into uh, the best morphing sequence, uh, where you know uh, Time Force versus uh, Time Ranger. Uh, so who wants to go first in making their case here? I think I will because I've been the most vocal about mm -hmm. it in the Time Ranger podcast. Yes, you have. I do not like the Time Ranger morphing sequence even a little bit. I think it's very cheap CGI. It has like the 3D rendering of their heads bugs the ever living crap out of me. Oh yeah, they're so, they're ugly. They're yeah. real. I, <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I was thinking the exact same thing. Honestly, like honestly, like when I'm looking when I was watching Time Force earlier in the week, I was so thankful that I didn't have to look at ugly. 3D graphic renderings from like 1990. Like, literally, to me, the Time Ranger morphing sequence. Do y'all remember original Doom from like 1990 something? Yeah. No. It, it reminded me of graphics like that. <laughs> and I just cannot get behind that morphing sequence. So I'm giving this one to Time Force. Yeah, Seconded. Okay. What was, yeah? What was up with Yuri's ooga booga pose during? Dude, well, I don't know. <laughs> she, she, she was doing the. She was doing the. I'm breaking into your house by sneaking into the backyard and I'm jumping over the fence right now. Pose. <laughs> what the heck is that? No, no, like literally, Patrick. I her morphing pose might have added a point of a point of a point. To my dislike of her. <laughs> <laughs> so the you first forgot that came to my <laughs> Yeah. I'm, why I'll why give, did I I'll give Huh? Sorry, but why did I say look like he was about to like start jumping high in the air like oh like <laughs> Oh dude, yeah, I forgot about him. <laughs> but no, like these were just I'm sorry, man. These are terrible. The only pose that actually made sense to me, like, even though the, the, the morph sequence was still bad for me, Domon's with him holding his arms like this, like he's, like, like you know, flexing, that's the only one that actually, like, makes sense. It, it made sense, but at the same time, it's like, okay, can we just get something better? Because we've seen better. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm, not, I'm not, like, that's, I'm not disagreeing with you on that. I'm just saying, like, honestly, he's actually like that. This might be a hot yes, take, but I think... When we were reviewing Jetman and Zero Ranger, we had better looking sequences there than we do here. I mean, there wasn't the sequence. <laughs> yeah, Jetman and Zero Ranger didn't really have much of a sequence. Well, Zero Ranger had a sequence. It wasn't really like pronounced, but they had like the morphing coin in the background in some cases. Nah, yeah. So that looked better. That little bit of animation that they mm. did bother to do looked better than what Time Ranger gave us. Mm. Yeah, I've and never been a huge fan of money. I've sad. never been a huge fan of Time Rangers sequence either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do we want to do a clean sweep here, guys? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna be a contrarian and split because I don't like Time Forces either. <laughs> it's too <laughs> basic. There's nothing to it. Yeah, I it's, was about it's to say probably that. the most. It's probably the most uninspired Power Rangers morphing sequence ever because it's just. The bare minimum. Now, I, when I don't you like compare it against other morphing sequences, I'll agree with you from Power Rangers, but mm -hmm. if we're just talking these two, there's no contest. Time Force mm -hmm. has a better one than Time Ranger. Uh, I mean, I, I I think the reason why I'm giving it even is because Time Forces does have... I mean, Time Rangers does have personality to it. It doesn't yeah. look good, but at least it has some kind of, you know, uniqueness to it. So, I mean, really? I think Yuri being of, Oogie Boogie is a character trait for her that's what i'm saying it's not good but i mean at least it's like 
distinguishable <laughs> compared to other, you know. It's so it's like, I think they're just, I think they're just evenly like, who cares? Okay, I can. No, not that. me. I, I actually enjoy the the morph sequence. Yeah, time I might. Was, So that's just me. Uh, okay, I I like Eric's morphing sequence, honestly, yeah. but I'm not a fan of the main five. So. Yeah, I might feel tempted to split mine. Yeah, honestly, too. Quantum Ranger has the best sequence out of anybody between both seasons because Time Fires was yeah. pretty simple too. Time Fires is boring. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to split mine with Patrick too. Okay. So 3 1. Yep. Let me just. And uh, we're on the board, guys. Look. Let's go. Ooh. And now we get to have the most interesting of debates about the theme okay. song. All right. So right here, guys, as you can see, I have this automatically updating. So it's Time Force 3, Time Ranger 1. So now thank, let's God you know how, thank God you know how to work Excel. <laughs> Dude, I have to use it as part of my job. Patrick, <laughs> have you seen Nathan's PowerPoint? Those are really on point. <clears throat> yeah, no, but PowerPoint's easier to use than Excel. <laughs> no, but I, I've Excel long will since fight come, you. <laughs> I've long since come to the uh, conclusion that Nathan has a better grasp of how to use Microsoft Office than I do. I mean, it's part of doing my job, guys. <laughs> my day job. So I mean, yeah. it's part of my day job too, but I still suck at it. I spent a couple of hours today <laughs> arguing with Microsoft Excel because I wanted this is off topic, by the way, but I wanted to be able to do track changing on Excel. But no, I couldn't do track changing on Excel. So I had to resort to putting stupid comment <laughs> tabs on each of the cells that I wanted to have a comment for. To say, hey, I updated the value here. Yeah, I'm Excel not happy. Can be a, Excel can be a huge pain with that. Yeah. It kind of influences what you do sometimes. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now let's move on to the hot debate here. Time Force's theme song versus Time Ranger's theme song. This is uh, going to be a huge debate, I can tell. Mm. I'm split. Yeah, because here's the Ugh. thing. I, I love listening to, like, Time Ranger's theme song is honestly, like, an amazing work of art. Like, it honestly sounds like a Queen song half the time. But uh, that, <laughs> that guitar solo in the middle of the Time Force theme song is something that I always love listening to. Like, I, I legitimately can't decide which... But I, I mean, what about uh, Riz and Patrick? You want to try to do anything to kind of break this tie? I time for Time Ranger's theme is one of my favorites in Sentai. I love the crap out of that song just because I I love how it feels. I think I mentioned this in the first episode of the Time Ranger review, but I like how it's very grandiose and kind of fits the the theming of time travel and stuff pretty well. But Time yeah. Force's theme kind of suffers the same problem as a lot of other Power Rangers themes where there's it not having a full version really holds it back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm going to give it to Time Ranger. So I am in the same boat as the rest of y'all in terms of Time Force's theme is one that gets me hype in the morning and it's like, time, time yeah. force. Time Force. Yeah, but it's, then, it's hard to not sing along to it. <laughs> but Time Ranger has an energy that I can really vibe with. And so yeah. I have to split my vote here. Yeah. Nah, I'm going full in on Time Ranger. That is that is fair. Yeah, I'm probably going to split my vote here too. Uh, just get, um, okay, so that, okay, so we got one. Okay, hold on, wait. Equal. Damn it. Equal. Equals one. Okay, that's for Patrick. <laughs> zero point five plus zero point five. Nope. Plus. You put. Oh. A, you put a. Yeah. There you go. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry. I get. I get confused when I have to put that. It, it's the same key. Okay, so that's two point five. For. Uh, Who was the wait. one? Was that Anthony? Oh wait! No! 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 Damn it! Not this me. was. Uh, this was the t okay. Yeah, that was you have. Oh, you got it backwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> zero point five plus zero point five plus zero point five plus yeah. zero for Patrick, so that's one point yep. five, mm -hmm. and then equals 
one plus one point five. Yeah, one. There you go. There we go. Just All right, so two point five. All you right, so. math, my young Padawan. Yeah, totally. <laughs> All right, so now we uh, we have the score, uh, Time Force at four and a half, and Time Ranger at three and a half. So uh, mm. thanks to that. Um, so uh, now we're going to move on to uh, best original soundtrack without taking the theme song into account, by the way. Yeah. So this is where also, things get a little dicey for me. So while I'm split on the theme song, one thing that I realized watching Time Force recently was they do a better job at like the Zord summoning music and mm. um, they do a better job with like the battle music and just the emotional music in the background, like the key moments when things are really going to hit like hit hard. Like the music really helps sell stuff. Like I'm looking at the scene with Wes and his father when Wes thinks his dad died, for example. There's this light bit of sad music in the background. You can barely hear it, but it's there. And so stuff like that I appreciate. So I have to give mine to Time Force here. Yeah, and another song I like from Time Force that uh, I, I've been trying to find this song in its <laughs> wrong format for years, but I can't. It's that um, I remember two times that it was playing, but the one where I'll always remember it is when uh, – Alex is fighting Rancic in the uh, in the first episode, and not the one where he captures Rancic. The one where Rancic actually kills him, like the way that that just like I don't know. That sounds like very like suspenseful, like keeping you on the edge of your seat yeah. type of music. Was it during uh, the actual fight, or was it when he actually died? Uh, it was during the actual fight. Like, oh when, yeah. It, it's the song that starts when Rancic is all like, Red Ranger, back again, you'll be there. Again. And then he does the, the like, thing with the dun, 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 dun. I remember I remember slightly now. It's starting to ring yeah. the bell. Yeah. I mean, there's only one song that I remember from the Time Ranger soundtrack. And I'm, okay, well, okay, aside from Time Fire's theme song, I remember that one that always has to start with like that dumb thing, which is something that Anthony would always bring up that plays like some really uncomfortable music i can't remember mm -hmm. what it's called i like that song but honestly i can't remember much and mm -hmm. here's the thing i mean i remember a lot of sentai original soundtracks like i remember go kaiger's soundtrack i remember shinkinger's soundtrack yeah. i'm not saying the time rangers is bad but aside from maybe that one song nothing really stood out no i mean the only thing that stood out is the theme song that's about all i can th remember thinking back on it Uh, I'm I'm actually going to give Time Ranger the edge mostly for one reason and it's distinctness because Time Force's music is good but it's also kind of in line with the rest of the Power Ranger seasons where it's like like mood rock but Time Force's keeps in that kind of like operatic theme that the theme song has and it makes it unique and it a little bit more memorable to me at least so that's interesting because i don't remember any of it because time force's <laughs> ost honestly blends in with every other season around it i it's I good agree with you. it's good but if you like were to play it and then play like a song from In Space or Lightspeed Rescue and stuff. I probably wouldn't be able to tell you which season it belongs to because it all sounds the same. I actually it's good, can't tell the difference. But there's no dis it, but it's there not, actually is a difference. It's not like I know there is, but it's like it's a lot harder to tell than it is in Sentai. And I think that gives the season more personality. So I'll, I'll give Time uh, Ranger the point here for that alone. I think that's fair, although I, I would say that there's pro – that, I mean, especially in the finale, like, that's when I think uh, Time Force's soundtrack really starts to stand out. Like, that scene that – Oh, yeah, like, when it, when it actually tries to do something more unique, and but those are – songs are usually held for, like, very specific moments. Like, the Quantum Ranger theme song is incredible, but it's so scarcely mm -hmm. used. Yeah. Um, or or that scene but, where uh, Rancic looks down at the baby and then he realizes 
yeah, I need to stop this. And he's yeah. like, you can hear vocalizing yeah. there almost like it's out of but, a Lord of the Rings movie or something like that. But another thing, but another thing now that I think about it, that I kind of want to help give the edge of time range for is that because Sentai isn't afraid to use vocal tracks in the seasons, some of their more emotional moments, they whipped out some of these emotional, like uh, lyrical songs that actually elevated the scenes a lot. Like the, yeah. the episode where, um, there, uh, which episode was it where they uh where Tachi had run off to fight somebody and the rest of the team was like coming to terms with like the whole you know altering time thing and they were like having the existential crisis and they each ran off one by one like the song elevated that scene and Time Ranger does a really good job of stuff like that so uh, Nate you're muted <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, I can see that. Like to the point where maybe I might want, feel tempted to split my vote here too. Uh, but An Anthony, are you giving it to Time Force? I'm giving it to Time Force. I've been against the uh Time Ranger music whatsoever. It's just more I just I have more connection with Time Forces because like it that orchestral always gets me hype. So, you know. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. And like I said in my and like last night's review, like not well, not last night, because we 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 did the thing last night, but but as far as I'm concerned, it's probably not even getting filmed, not getting uploaded anytime soon, whatever. So yeah. The archives are all over the place for when we're actually uploading these things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just just yeah. so people know, we recorded Time Force last night. We're recording yes, this today, yeah. but we have podcasts in the middle of all this stuff. Yeah. So yeah. have fun. But okay, I'm splitting <laughs> my vote. Patrick's giving it to Time Ranger, so that's one and a half for Time Ranger. And then Riz and Anthony give it to Time Force, so that yeah. gives two and a half. So that brings us to seven for Time Force, five for Time Ranger. Yep. All right, so now let's move into the uh, to the big, you know, the meat of this stuff. All right, we're going to talk about a story now. So uh, we've we already talked in depth. You know, we've talked in depth about you know the Time Ranger story during our review, and then just last night we spoke in depth about how Time Force's story works. So uh, who wants to go first, uh, trying to make their case on who deserves it? I'm. I'm. I think it's comfortable comfortably giving this to time ranger because i've i think I, I brought it up a little bit last night when we were doing time force and it's like i, I keep saying it's a common complaint with time force that its story kind of has a lot of like lack of explanation in it and that we're we praise time ranger for doing like nathan keeps saying time ranger like everything led into the next thing which ultimately made the finale kind of like a culmination of everything that happened but and even going back to something we said last night how like the whole great extinction plot from time ranger was so like lazily enforced into time forces finale and stuff like that it felt like it was held back by having to use sentai footage in places and it kind of made the story a little bit more sloppy by comparison so I think Time Ranger wins this one easily. Yeah, I think Patrick just kind of expressed my sentiment too. I'm kind of, I'm definitely like, if we're talking about character stories, that's a completely different question. Um, that's the more complicated discussion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when we get to talking about the Rangers, that's when we're going to have a complicated discussion. But when we're talking yeah. about like the overall <clears throat> story, I mean, you know, I said this um I'm pretty sure I said this back when we did our uh, like history of Super Sentai. This was before everybody else had seen Time Ranger. Watching this has just kind of reinforced it. Like a lot, of, like where Time Ranger, no, 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 where Time Force is really kind of lacking in terms of story. That's where Time Ranger pretty like kind of thrives, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But uh, Riz, Anthony. Uh, you want to make your cases now? I'm more split, to be honest with you. Yeah, like, I understand why you guys like Time Ranger over Time Force, but I also 
have many complaints with aspects of Time Ranger's plot. Um, and I'm having a hard time separating my complaints with Time Ranger to just the characters because the characters in some cases ruin Time Ranger for me. Um, there's some things that I think they just didn't handle well. And when Time Force adapted it, they did better. But at the same time, like Patrick mentioned, the great extin extinction storyline came out of nowhere in Time Force. Like literally, I think it came up one episode before the finale began. And it was more of a, oh, hey, by the way, the thing that we were kind of hyping up, here's what it is, but it's not really well explained what's happening here. And we're going to use the lazy explanation from Time Ranger of the crystals are wider coming up. But I feel like Time Ranger loses some points as well for... Um, I don't think they overcomplicated a plot, but I also think um, having a hard time verbalizing this one because I, I don't know what it is about you, Time Ranger's story that I don't care about. Is it? I'm I'm going to take a guess and say just typical time travel shenanigans is bothering you, because I did kind of agree with the idea that. Stories that involve time travel are always going to be messy in some regard. Yeah. yeah. So as long as you don't I screw think... it up, like, to a hilariously bad degree, I tend <clears throat> to be more lenient on it because it's such an easy concept to mess up. Well, so a spoiler for later in this podcast, when we get to miscellaneous, I was actually going to award points for time travel storytelling separate from this. But you are okay. correct. A lot of my complaints about Time Ranger is I think the time travel aspect was very confusing. Making the entire point of what Anthony's favorite character ended up doing at the end that much more confusing. Wait, like, what do you mean? Wait, what are you talking about? You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> No, it just ex just explain what what you're talking about because like I'm just trying to figure like I'm like huh. <laughs> okay, so literally what I said is your favorite character of all time, Ryoma. Uh huh. Um, oh yeah, dang Ryoya. it. Ryoya, Ryoya. Okay, fine. He he doesn't deserve to have a real name according to Anthony. No, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. He's not my favorite character. Who? <laughs> the star. Why you make that line? Why are you lying? Why are you lying? <laughs> Why, Why are you lying? lying? Why are you <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but okay, so going back to him, mm -hmm. the entire the entire story of why things are happening in Time Ranger is so he could save himself. And we don't get that in Time Force. Like we don't have him be a colossal dick. Like Alex is a dick, yes. but he's not a colossal asshole in the no. vein that this guy was. Yeah. And I can mm -hmm. respect Alex's motives here. And I know this goes into story. I'm not bringing, I'm not, I mean, it goes into character. I'm not going to character a lot. But I think the fact that Alex and him are pulling the strings in the background, forcing the plot in a certain direction, does hurt Time Ranger a bit because the time travel aspects just do not make sense. And if you want to hear my full thoughts on that, I refer you back to the penultimate podcast on Time Ranger we did where I gave a colossal rant about this. Because yeah, I don't but, think any of y'all want to re re have me rehash that again. But at the same time, I mean, I would argue that in the case of, a well, I mean, first of all, I mean, in Time Ranger, they fully explain, like they go into explicit detail on why, re on how Ryuya has been pulling the strings. But in the case of Time Force, I mean, I would argue that, I mean, honestly, if we're just talking about story in general, I would say that time travel, the time travel gimmick for time force is honestly just kind of an afterthought because like, we're not, because again, we're not given any explanations on how, well, first of all, Alex, the only line we get is that he says, everything that you've done, I've allowed 
to happen. But that's just one throwaway line. We're not giving any real examples. Yeah. And, you know, he's said how their presence in the uh, – you know, how the Rangers' presence in the year 2001 is affecting the future, but we're not allowed to see how that happens. And ironic – and, I mean, even if you want to bring in character stuff, like – we're shown how, and again, I know the time travel stuff is messed up, and I get that, but we're shown how every, how they fought, and it's created better futures for all of them. You know, we'll go into more details when we get yeah. to the characters. While we're not shown that in Time Force, the only person who has a very clearly better future is Jen, because Alex isn't dead, but she gives that up. So yeah. He doesn't want yeah. Alex. He wants Wes to see the message of her future, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... But and but I mean again, at least in that whole arc, like we're we're shown that, and I would also argue that like that that moment where and not to undermine Wes's arc, and I it's hard for me to kind of dip into this without going into character, but like yeah. that, that moment when Ryuya takes over, he says like you know you're supposed to become like the leader of the Asami group, like it hits him deep because. Here's Tatsu you're thinking, wow, I became a time ranger be as my way of getting out of, you know, taking up my family name, and it just led me right here. Maybe everything I is mean, just that, and, and maybe everything is. And I don't feel like it's emphasized enough in the Time Force thing. I feel like in Time for Ranger, they really do hit the whole thing about fate and destiny much deeper than I think Time Force does. They they definitely hit Fate and Destiny deeper. <clears throat> I agree with you there. <clears throat> but the story to me never made sense of why Zendril Asshole, as Anthony Lovely calls him, <laughs> um, could not have... He only saw two outcomes negating the fact that there are infinite number of outcomes that could happen. Um, Alex sees the one most likely outcome and he tells everyone to come back, but they all decide we're going to make our own destiny and go back and help <clears> Wes. <throat> but I, and it's, I but it's not emphasized what the problem is with them going back to help Wes is in time Ranger. They have a lot to legitimately lose. Well, if I they think, go back and help Tatsuya, what do they have to lose if they go help Wes? They die. The, the threat was they're all going to die. That's what Alex predicted was going to happen. So they were risking their lives to go back. Okay, but okay, but that's still pretty standard stuff. I mean, like, they, I mean, okay, they could lose their lives, but I mean, you could argue that they would have, that that threat was always there, even when they were just fighting a random mutant. Like, well, I think they've already accepted that risk. Yeah. So they would have had, <clears throat> so I mean, they're already they're basically doubling down on a risk that they've already accepted in the time ranger finale. There's legitimate stakes there where now all of a sudden I say has a cure for a disease that won't, that is going to kill him. And he, and he can live a lot longer. Now, all of a sudden Yuri has her loving family back. Like there's stuff, there's new stakes in that moment that weren't yeah. there at the beginning of the series that kind of makes this a legitimate dilemma while in time force, yes, sure they would die, but you could. But didn't they already kind of accept that responsibility early on in the series, anyway? I mean, you're right, and I'm starting to see your point, and I think I agree with you for the <clears throat> most part. Um, I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to award points and miscellaneous for time <clears throat> travel shenanigans, though. Or time force. Yeah. Okay. Because, okay, so while Time Force is more simple and they don't give a lot of detail, <clears throat> um, at least the consistency is there for how they do time traveling stuff. And I'm not left with a big gaping hole of a question later of what the hell are they doing? <laughs> But I would argue that a huge part of why, I mean, and, but I mean, I think the big thing on reason why there's not that much complicated stuff with time travel and time force is because the time travel stuff is not really emphasized in time force at all to begin with. Because I mean, aside from the fact that they travel back in time, yeah, like, 
okay, you have that one filler episode, a really bad filler episode with Katie. And then you have the episode where Eric and Wes go back in time to free the Q-Rex. But I mean, aside from that, like, I mean, technically in the theme song, they try to show antics yeah. of Wes and Trip in the Wild West, but that's not time travel. That's them being trapped in like a movie, a movie dimension. Universe. That was kind of a, a bait and switch. I mean, I was, like, I was like, come on, man. I would love to have seen that. I know, right? <laughs> But I think at the core, they still have that consistency that Time Rangers just didn't have. Because like I mentioned in my rant a couple of podcasts ago, there are, in my opinion, two very well accepted time travel set of rules. The Back to the Future version and Terminator version. Time Ranger didn't do either one and made a huge mess out of it. And it was hard to follow what rules are we playing by here. At least with Time Force, you can tell pretty clearly that we're playing with the Terminator rules. Yeah, I think that's but, fair. And see, honestly, that's and honestly, that's <clears throat> that's probably part of the reason why I give the edge to Time Ranger too, because you're basing rules. You're trying to judge it off of rules we honestly don't know even if they even exist or not. It's something right. that we truly do not know how it actually works. So as long as you explain it in a way that makes sense, I will tend to be more lenient about it. So the fact that Time Ranger gives more depth in that regard compared to Time Force, I think, is a plus in its direction. But I think the depth they give that that was always confusing. Not to me. And, I mean, to me. And that's always been a... So and that's always been a tick of mine against Time Force is that it like hinted at stuff but never delved too too much into it and it made me yeah. asking questions of well you've been talking about this stuff well where's where is it yeah so and see I, that's I, I why I just... but but see now that I've given my point for time travel in the miscellaneous I feel more comfortable giving the full point to Time Ranger. Because everything else you said, I agree with. Yeah. Okay. But I, I just had to make that case of time range that, and time travel is garbage compared to time. I forward. mean, I think that's. I fair. mean, yeah. Like, I mean, honestly, even series like Back to the Future, you have really iffy stuff in it. Like, yeah, it's but it's, it's a concept that you can't do cleanly. So well, it's a concept I, you have to be a little because it doesn't exist in the real world. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. As long as you don't like hilariously screw it up, you know, right. I, you can be a little bit lenient on judging it. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. Yeah. But the rest of the stuff, like the, the tighter explanation for everything that happened leading up, mm. I agree. If you take away the time travel shenanigans that they pulled, I think Time Ranger had a better plot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so, I know Anthony and I. Uh, okay, Anthony Riz and I want to give it uh, to Time Ranger. What about you, An uh, Anthony? Patrick Riz and I. Are I'm Ranger. a little split on this one, to be honest with you. I know it's shocking, right? Because, because <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, both 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 y'all made some good points. So it's not like I'm saying, oh, yo, Riz is right because of this, or Nate's right because of this. I I agree with both of you. So, yeah. I do too, but I also don't want to keep splitting everything down the line. It's not going to. <laughs> well, I can't help it, dang it. <laughs> okay, so you're going to give it a. You're going to split yours, Anthony. Yes. Okay. Okay. So because Anthony split his vote, we now have a a tie. We have a tie at eight and a half at eight and a half. So that's ooh, cool. now it's getting fun. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're going to move on to uh, okay. We talked about story and everything, so let's move on to the uh, the real you know main course of this. Let's talk about the characters, and I'm going to save Rangers for last because in yeah. a Tokusatsu show, Rangers have to be the main course. So let's talk about the best villains first. Okay, so let's define what you mean by villains. Let's talk about what villains you want to consider uh, for time. Uh, let's do the big. Let's, let's let's do the big three, as in Rancic Nadira. Frax and then Dornero, Gian, and I forgot her name. Leela. <laughs> Leela. Uh, Leela. Yeah. It's, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I 
I'm going to let you guys go first because my thoughts are going to be pretty easy. So I want to hear yours. Um, do we want to start off with like the least villains, or or like do we want to start off like with least? I'm trying to think how I say how would I say this, like Leela and. Madeira first, or you want to do like Donero and Ramsey? I mean, I, how, I, how we I, do I can, this? I can, we can talk I can, about let's, each let's, let's go to the, let's, let's go bottom up with that. And Nadira yeah. just craps all over Lyra. Let's be yeah. real here. Nadira is the best. <laughs> yeah, it's, because, I mean, honestly, Leah is just a, it's kind of weird. She's, she came first, but she's a watered down version of Nadira without any like of the development. She's afterwards. just a gold digger. Yeah. That's it. She's just a gold yeah. digger. And there's nothing else to it. Nadira actually has charming interaction with Rancic. She actually undergoes character development, and her role in the finale is actually very significant. It's so now, don't get me wrong. At the beginning, yeah. she was also a gold digger, and she's also was, no, she was a small brat. She no, she's just a, she's no, a, no, no, no. I'm a, saying that. I'm not saying that as a, as a bad thing. I'm just pointing out that this is this is what she yeah. was at the beginning of the show. Yeah, don't get that. Yeah. Now, yeah, calm down, y'all. But, <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying. Well, you were using a little bit of a, a incorrect term there. The gold digger for our dad doesn't really make any sense, but yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah. I meant, I meant, I should, I should say he, she's like spoiled brat, like spoiled child. Yeah. I can oh yes, yeah. spoiled brat. Yeah, but she but did like, act, yeah, act like a, a gold digger when it came to um, fat catfish in that one episode with Jen's revenge. Yeah. I Bluto. can say that. I can use that. Yeah, yeah so. Bluto. I yeah, yeah but I think I think Madeira just wins hands down for that. Like, she oh, is no. a much better character. Without really question. Yeah. Without um, question. Okay, so that was the easy one. Yeah. What is our next? Okay, what's the next one down up the list? Is it going to be Darnero versus Frax and Gian. Okay, so Frax and Gian. What do you want to do? Frax and Gian. Uh If we do, and... if we do Frax, well, okay, with Gluto and Donero. it's Donero. No, I'm comparing yeah. Donero with Rancic. Rancic. That's more fair. Okay. Okay, so in that because case, they're technically, they're technically the main enemy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so if we're going to Frox and Gian, I'm really split on that. Me too. This is this is this is probably one of the toughest things I've had to decide between. Because I mean, it, because I actually love their roles in their respective series, yeah, and I know that we kind of have like a. We had a we had a rant about Frax last night, and I was kind of withholding a lot of my opinions on him because it mm -hmm. involved talking about uh, Gian and Dolnero, Gian. and I like how their backstory, their role in the series, is like a perfect encapsulation of the main antagonist, where they both welcomed in the main antagonist, which is Dolnero and Rancic. They both were friendly to them. Don uh, Frax got basically killed by Rancic and came back to be like a haunting demon over Rancic for what he did. While yeah. Gian was killed trying to protect somebody and then got tragically put into a situation where he lost his sanity. Yeah. And... It mirrors the main antagonist really well, where Rancic was a cold-hearted killer and Dornero was a a uh, he was a mob boss, but he was respectful and cared for the people who cared for him. Yeah, and it makes it, it it's really hard for me to pick because, like like I just said earlier, their roles in each series are so good and so in depth. Yeah. Okay, so, so I, I would argue. Quick I mean, question before you get to that, Nate. Do we want to add um, different scores for the different main villains here? Like, for example, Nadira, Lele, and then Gian, Frax, and then Rancic and Darnera separate? Because I cannot give you a score for just Time Force versus Time Ranger. It has to be character by character for me. Okay, yeah, we get it. Well, how, about, how, about we, how about we do this? We give... It's a three points for the category. One for each one okay. can delve into that yeah, category. Fine. So, like, okay, if you pick, if you pick Frax, and that's if you go Nadira, uh, Gian, and then Rancic, that's two for Time Force and one for Time Ranger. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Like we can that. do that. Okay. Well, we're okay in that case. Hold on. Let me just put. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, let me just put four right time, here. Real so quick that way, time time, time ranger or time force only has four points. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Uh, yeah, time yeah. force automatically uh, time gets four points because we're all yeah, time we're all force already has four points. Yeah. Mm. Um. But Nadira. okay. In, yeah. In my case, for Nadira and Randstick, or what are you doing? Uh, for Nadira. Oh, no, okay, no, okay. Nadira. We all, all will agree that Nadira was better, so time okay. force gets four okay. points. Yeah. That. I was just yeah, throwing up, but if I could throw a four under right off the bat, I was like, wait, hang on, let's talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. yeah. Um, but <laughs> yeah, that's I would argue doing. it's Ian because what because okay, I agree with Patrick that like their roles in the series are perfect, but I mean, if I'm just gonna look at Gian versus Frax from a character perspective, I have to say Gian is just the much yes. character because yeah, and that here's was, the thing about it. go ahead. And that was the point. That was the point I was about to get to. Was the thing that's probably going to give me the edge to Gian over Frax is kind of that big rant we talked about last night of Frax going after humanity when that wasn't his main objective in the series, and that was like another point of Time Ranger's Sentai footage kind of screwing over Time Force's plot a little bit. Um, so it did make Frax a little bit you know, inconsistent with who he was going after while Gian was. Yeah. <laughs> Gian was more calculated. I'm going to give, yeah, I'm going to give the slightest of edges to Gian. Yeah. Same but, here. Just cause, and, cause we, we all agreed that like Frax needed more fleshing out for his character mm -hmm. to make sense. While Gian has, everything he needs to make sense as a character yes. yeah i think yeah. i think the reason why gian gets my point is because he ended up being indirectly the main antagonist because yeah. You, yeah. they want you to think all along it's darnero and darnero is not anything at all like spoilers darnero is not getting my point screw that guy <laughs> Um, no, actually, I'm, we're going to talk about that in more detail. I might end up splitting it. I don't know yet. We'll talk about it when we get there. But Gian being the main villain and having such a good story is why I give it to him over Frax. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Frax has a very similar story to Gian, but they just needed a little bit more work on him. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Nate, I'm going to give my point to Gian on this one. Okay, Anthony. Mm -hmm. What uh, on uh, Frax versus Gian? Who are you? Who are you giving it to? See, I'm also split on this as well because it's like, <laughs> it's like I don't understand like how both characters are good, but I grew up watching one more than the other one, and I'm still split. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's like, because Honestly, Frax is not a bad character. No, not at all. Yeah, nobody's saying he's a bad character. No, no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that y'all are saying that. It's just like, it's like now that y'all explain that to me, now I'm just like, dang, like, it's it's like like Fritz said. It, I'm I'm gonna say it similar to. I think Frax feels like he's like that dish that's good, but you didn't really cook it that well. And had you like maybe. Add a little bit more seasoning, add a little, put in the oven a little bit longer, it would have came out perfect. Whereas, like, Gian, <clears throat> it's, it's <throat> good. It's great. Yeah, you, know, you, like, you can enjoy this, you know, any day, all day. I just wish we had it gotten <clears throat> sooner than later. You know what I'm saying? If that makes let sense. Me, let me help you out here, Anthony. Frax is a well done steak. Gian is yeah. a medium, well, like a rare medium mm -hmm. steak. That that's exactly what it is. Thank you, thank you. There you mm -hmm. go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the sad thing is, I mean, if the writers and I, I, I hate to be hard on the Time Force writers here, but I have to because these writers, like, if there's one thing that these writers gave us, it was amazing villains in both Light yeah. Speed, in both uh, Lost Galaxy and in Space. So yeah. All you needed was just one throwaway line of Frax just saying. <clears throat> I've lost everything. Screw everything. I'm gonna just destroy the whole world and watch it burn. You write in like a line there, and that would have just fixed everything for him. Yeah. Like, so, what are you thinking, Anthony? I 
I'm not going to disagree with Nate on this, but I feel like, and this is not, not detriment towards, like, I'm not saying this for my sake. I'm just saying it to like maybe what the writers are probably thinking. The writers probably thought, and I'm not, I'm not saying that they all right or often I'm saying this or not, but I feel that the writers thought that we would catch on that it's, that's probably what he's assuming that what's what, what he's thinking. But like I said, it's probably not even the case. It could just be like, yeah, I mean, it's, it this, is a this character to be like this. Yeah. Yeah, it's believable, but they didn't outright say it, which I think it, right. it definitely would have helped if they outright said it. But yeah. Uh, do you want to give it to again, Anthony? I'm going to give it to again. Oh, okay. okay. Cool. So we're back to the tie. All right, so now let's do yep, uh, Rancic. Tie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Rancic versus Darnero mm. is what we're doing now? Yep. Yeah. I don't like this. I'm... Because I, I think this is an unfair comparison on so many different levels. So... Rancic. This is hard for my voice. No, Rancic. I, I know it's Rancic. I'm going to say Rancic at the end, but I don't like the comparison. Because to me, it should have been Rancic versus Gian. Yeah, this is where it gets I don't think that would have been. I don't know if I would, that would have found that fair either. Yeah. No, it's but, not. But it's better than Darnera versus Rancic because yeah, it's well, I mean, difficult to like compare these people. Who else, like, who else should, like if we compare yeah. in space versus Mega Ranger, like what are we going to do? Compare Astronema to Shiba Arena <laughs> or whatever her name <laughs> is? <laughs> like, we're com- we're, no, here's the thing. We're comparing a. Astronomer to Dr. Hintler, and then we're laughing as Astronomer just roffel stomps that loser. Oh, yeah, that'll be <laughs> but yeah. Dr. Hintler <laughs> is the biggest Bears villain ever. <laughs> yeah, so Darnero had a really good storyline at the end. He, I hated Darnero. I hated Darnero all the way up until like. <clears throat> Episode 35 or 40. I don't know when it happened, but whenever he, we started getting a little bit of his backstory and we saw that he was not a bad person, that's when I was more like, okay, I like Dronero. But until then, I hated his guts. But when they added his story, I was like, okay, this guy this guy has something going for him. But Rancic, yeah. my man, Rancic, his threat factor was so high. He killed a ranger five minutes into the season. Yeah, he did. Like, I'm. I mean, I'm honestly okay. I I get the threat factor there is, and you know, I I understand that. But I would say that, like, I mean, honestly, I kind of want to split it just because I feel like these two. Because I feel like Dornero and Rancic are both different characters, and I feel like they both f- fill those roles perfectly. Like Rancic is obviously just meant to be like your typical evil guy who's yeah who wants to conquer the world mm. and, you know, take it over. And yeah, I mean, if we're talking about that role that he feels great, but yeah. in the case of Dornero, like they wanted you to believe that he's the main antagonist, but then he, but then they kind of make him a bit more of a three dimensional character down the line where, you know, he's not where, okay, he does some evil and messed up stuff, but at the end of the day, he still just wants to be a rich guy because he's just a corrupt, you know, kind yeah. of, the godfather mm-hmm. like me. And that's why yeah. I hate this comparison is because you're so right. Like, this comparison does not work. I'd rather give a point for Rancic or against Rancic and give a point for Dornero or not give it to Dornero. Like, I wouldn't even want to, like, say I'm comparing the two because I don't want to do that. Well, I mean, if we like both characters, maybe we... I mean, I don't know. This is kind of complicated because if we're comparing... Gian to Frax. I mean, technically, we would have to compare Gluto to Dornero, but that, but then Dornero wins that. Dornero wins that. So, I mean, I mean Dornero down. versus Dornero versus a stale bagel <laughs> wins. <laughs> Dornero yeah, versus a wet bad. noodle. Dornero versus a wet noodle. <laughs> I, I think for this, and I, I mean, I think, I mean, this is just another sign that I kind of need to fine tune this uh, scoreboard a little bit better for. But I mean, you know, we'll get there. But maybe like if we like both Dornero and Rancic, we could each 
we give can give a point, point. To like each series. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cuz I don't want to split the vote because that doesn't help me at all. Like I I can't do that. So yeah. I'd rather give one point to Rank, <laughs> one point to De Niro. Yeah, and I mean that that's how I would Yeah. Uh, I kind of want to yeah. do that myself because because I think that in terms of like character writing, I think ultimately Dornero is on par with Rancic in hindsight. Because in a weird way, his his moral code and yeah, exactly. That, that's kind of the weird thing. But that kind of doesn't make him as good as a of a villain as Rancic. But I think that makes him more interesting in a he's weird way. Not a villain. So I don't... He's a bumbling idiot who's running around wanting money. While Gian's yeah. pulling all the strings from the background as the real exactly, villain. That's yeah. the problem yeah. here. Yeah. And that's but, why I hate I mean, the comparison gonna... to the two. Yeah, it, but I mean, they do kind of fill that 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 role in the, each other's story. Yeah. That's kind of that's why it's so weird. But yeah, I would have to I would give I give a point to each of them because Yeah. You too, Riz? Yeah, I'm giving a point to each of them. Okay, what about Anthony? you, Anthony? You already know my answer, but I said it earlier. Rancid. Yep. Okay. Just yeah. rancid. <laughs> yep. Yep. Not changing my answer. <laughs> okay. So how did that work for Anthony? Does that mean he gives one point to Rancid but no points to De Niro, or does he get two points so. to yes. Rancid? Okay. Yeah. Cool. They both had a point up for grab, and he didn't give it to De Niro. So. Yeah. Wait, no, no, no. That's four because this is the time force one, and then uh, here <clears throat> it's just going to be seven. Since wait, Nathan, there's something wrong with your math over here. What's that? Okay, so let's recap. We gave a, a clean sweep for Nadira, right? Oh, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then for Gian and Frax, we gave it to me, Patrick, and you I'm gave reading. it to uh, Gian. I don't remember what Anthony did. Anthony, no, it was yeah, a clean sweep for Gian. Okay, yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, did he? Okay, we're back. He... No, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Anthony, I, I see... Anthony gave it to Gian. Yeah, I okay. Gian. I thought he split it. I thought I was wanting to call Nathan's math. So, so, out so this is four for Nadira and then four for Rancic. For Rancic, yeah. Rancic. So and it's, then, it's eight and seven. Yes, I mean yeah. four. You know, because yeah, yeah, that's what he had. Ian and then and then three because Anthony didn't want yeah. to give it to Nadira. So that's yeah. So that's you, me, and Patrick. So that's yeah. seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got okay. it. So right. sixteen and a half. For Time Force and 15 and a half for uh, Time, Time Ranger. Ranger. Let's move into uh, supporting cast. Um, okay, so defining this one. Uh, obviously, uh, Mr. Wataru Collins? Wasami and Mr. Collins. What's that? Yeah, yeah Wataru Wasami, that's uh, Tatsuya's father, and Mr. Mm -hmm. Collins. Okay, but then we also had uh, Hanami. Domon. Hanami. Han yeah, Hanami. Yeah, which unfortunately. Time Ranger at Time Force has no comparison to her. But, yeah. Well, no. she does technically in one episode. No, uh, no, that doesn't whatever. count. Yeah, I know. So, yeah. Okay, in this case, do we want to do... I know my answer, what I'm going to end up doing for, with the points. It's just a matter of how we're distributing points on this one. Because if we're going to do the same thing we did for Best Villain... Do you then... want to do it... I yeah. think I'd rather do like a one lump sum for all of them. Yeah. And in that case, I'm splitting it down the middle because Mr. Collins is superior to Asami. Yeah. But Hanami is just amazing. So I'm splitting that down yeah. the middle. Yeah. Miss, Mr. Collins is clear in a way better just because yeah. I don't like, I like how he doesn't have his head up his butt as deep as Tatsuya's dad does. No, and, he had the redemption had, story, and I loved it. Exactly! And yeah. It makes him... You, you you actually like their dynamic more, too, because, man, Tatsuya was going through the mental ringer because of that idiot. But yeah. Wes was... You know, he had a an emotional cushion. So, yeah, I, I kind of want to agree with Riz, where it's I give half the point to Time Ranger for Mr. Collins, and then Time Ranger gets the other point for Hanami. Because yeah. Tatsuya's dad doesn't get dick. I'm sorry. <laughs> he doesn't deserve it. Tatsuya's dad doesn't even deserve to be mentioned on this damn thing. Yeah, I'm not no. kind of insulted we're mentioning him on this damn thing, because he did nothing. Well, we had to. We needed I know, to, to I know, how much but... better Mr. Collins is. <laughs> right. But that's a piss-poor character. That doesn't even matter. Yeah. <laughs> so are we all splitting it down the middle? 
I'm doing uh, uh what's his name? Uh Mr. Collins. Over Hanami? Uh, that's the thing. That's why we're splitting it. That's why we're splitting yeah. it because Okay, I thought we were doing Hanami. because of the Okay, okay. I'm mis I misheard no. y'all, my bad. No, we were saying we're I'll giving split, half I'll a split point mine, to Time too. Ranger. Yeah, half a point to Time Ranger because of Hanami, the other and Time Force gets the other half because of Mr. Collins. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, are you going to do that too, then, Anthony? Yeah, my bad, y'all. I'm sorry. I thought we was I'm like, wait a minute. Like, Come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, All right. and it's two That's to two. Yeah. So two, eight, two. eighteen yeah. and a half for uh, Time Force, seventeen <clears throat> and a half for uh, Time Ranger. All right, yeah. now let's move into uh, the uh, the Rangers, and we're going to go one and by one each. This is going to be very difficult going forward. Oof. All right, let's start with our. Uh, <laughs> Let's start with our Red Ranger, Tatsuya Asami versus Wesley Collins. Can we start with the easy one first? Can we just give yeah. ISA, ISA the gets all the points? points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, that's something I want to disagree with you on. Honestly, honestly, just give blue, yellow, and green all the time, Ranger, right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. And then no, I was goes to easy, guys. Time Force. I was <laughs> and then pink to goes to Time Force. Goal. Huh? I was gonna split my green down the middle, actually. Uh, well, no, honestly, I think I think Sion is much better than Trip. Well, let, just because yeah. of his okay. backstory. But we're gonna get to that when we get to we'll that. We'll get to but that when we get to it. Yeah, definitely. I just want to get Lucas out of here. So yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hold on. I don't be... think we don't even need to debate this or talk. No, there's about no debate. It, no. Literally... <laughs> wait, wait. This is you need... awkward. Oh, dang it. Because, no, comparing ISA to Lucas is like that, uh, what, uh, Hydrogen Bomb versus Crying Baby meme that has been going around yeah. lately. <laughs> or it's, I, I wonder which one's going to win. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so back to Red. Um, I, I'm going West. Topsia was fine. He was a good Red. I'd call him like a B tier, but Wes was just way better to me. I, you so, know, it's weird. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah. I think that this isn't as one sided as it probably looks. Yeah. Because Wes, you're right, is a better written character. But I think yes. the story around Tatsuya was much better than the story around Wes because of the whole, you know, the, you know, the choosing your own destiny versus assigned destiny stuff. We talked about that very briefly earlier, but it was this kind of a who cares mentioned off hand kind of thing for Wes. But it was like the entire center point of time. And he had moments where he went through the ringer and it, it just, it, it probably elevated him up a little bit more. I'm still going to give it to Wes via slight edge because I like his character more, but yeah, I don't think it's as, it's nearly as one-sided as it's not one we made it sound. You want to split it, Patrick? I am, I'm honestly tempted to be honest with you, I'm legitimately tempted. I'm, not, um, I'm keeping mine on West. No, you know what? I want to give props to the writers for giving Tatsuya's story some emotional leverage and some emotional depth to it. So, yeah, I will split it, actually. Okay. I, I might feel tempted to split mine, too. Okay, I will, now, that <laughs> isn't to say... I would still call Wes my number two Red Ranger. That we all know who number one is. It's Andros, but uh, mm -hmm. but I would. But while with Tatsuya, I'm not. I'm not going to have him in my top five Sentai Red Rangers. Maybe top ten, but that's kind of a mm -hmm. different conversation. But I would say that you know. I mean, I don't know. Just listening to Patrick, you know, say how like. Wes's whole desire to like find his destiny and everything like I don't know like I, I get what the writers were trying to do like you're trying to imply that like 
he was born into like a rich elitist socialite lifestyle but he never wanted to be there because and he always wanted to do his own thing and i feel like they did it well but i just feel like it's fleshed out to a very to a much bigger degree like okay sure when we watch the first couple of episodes it just seems like tatsu is being really petty about you know him yeah. just wanting to spite his dad but then we later mm -hmm. find out no he wanted to reject his family name because he was always associated with that and everybody just said man you know he's just a stupid moron loser who's only here because his rich daddy mm -hmm. pulled some strings and all that and yeah. he, and he wanted to make a name for himself and like yeah i hear all that nate i understand it all but that's only one aspect of wes's character that i think we're talking about here mm -hmm. there's also the love story with him and jen and there's also that direct connection between Wes and Alex that we do not get with Time Ranger. We don't get the uh, idea explicitly stated that Tatsia and he who will not be named for fear of pissing off Anthony, that they're related or that there's any connection there. He's just a random guy that happened to come across them and he just happened to be able to unlock it. They don't give a good explanation for that. So, no, I'm not giving it a top to you because Wes had way more going for him. Wait, how, when did they directly say that Alex and Wes were related, though? They said it several... The, I think they implied it. In the first... Yeah, and, uh, well, well, first of well, they Because they the DNA gave law. His, Yeah, and yeah, Time DNA Ranger law. did the same thing. <laughs> That's why they... Well, okay, no, 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 the, but, but here's the... No, the reason why they state that connection with Alex is because... Well, okay, never mind. I mean, I get what you're trying to say. I they mean, did explain it. Not they, not like they did a better they, job going through it, I think. Yeah, well, I establishing will, that like, Alex that, but... was the Red Ranger in the uh, future, while Ryu yeah, yeah, never yeah. Uh, didn't become Time Red until when he takes over later in the series. Yeah. Exactly. So I just think Wes had a lot more going from story-wise than Tatsuya did in that aspect. Because mm. I, I think Zen and Wes's love story added a huge facet to Time Force for me. If you didn't have that love story from the beginning building up all throughout, then I'd be more wanting to split it like you guys. But because they give the time to develop Wes into several different ways, I think he, I think he deserves that point for me. Y'all are free to do what you want, but I'm sticking with Wes. I'm still. I I, 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 I mean, agree with I, this one too. I I get it, and I, I do agree that the West Gen relationship thing is just leagues better. But yeah, I don't know. I just never got the kind of emotional, kind of like character storytelling from, from Wes's side, like I got from Tatsia's. It was there, but it just wasn't enough for me. Yeah. I can see that. So I, and I mean, he's a phenomenal. I just want to acknowledge. And I want to give. Yeah, I just want to give props to that part of Tatsuya's character because I think it does and deserve praise. I think what I want to do there is okay. <clears throat> this will only come out for miscellaneous if we have it be a unanimous vote. But okay. I think one thing that Tatsuya does by the end of the season which is what I think Patrick is really hitting at, is mm -hmm. the comment, the social commentary on mental health that Tashi has to go under. So I think yes. Time Ranger gets yeah. a point for the social mental health aspects of his character. Yes. Honestly, I, I will, I do want to talk, I do want to talk about that now that you bring it up. Yeah, I know and you it will. Is, it is background. a background. It's a point that I will give to Time Ranger inherently, but I want to save it until we're done with talking yeah. about every character but because I it is a cast-wide right problem. Yeah. 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 So yeah. just throwing it out there that that's how I'm kind of thinking about giving mm -hmm. something back to Tatsia because I do see the merit in him, but I can't yep. give yeah. him the point. Yeah. Not for yeah. Beth Red. Okay, well, we'll talk about that miscellaneous yeah. point once we get... Okay, yeah. so yellow goes to Domown. Don't even argue with me. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is that is that unanimous, guys? Yeah. Yes, yes. Unfortunately. <laughs> okay, okay. But, uh, sorry, yes, no. sorry, Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, just real quick for it's the people who are fault. listening. <laughs> it really no, it's not. It's the bad writing. Like, yeah, for, it's the bad writing. Uh, but uh, for the people who are just listening, uh, or if you're uh, listening to this on Spotify or iTunes, uh, so with uh, so we decided three to one for red, uh, three going in favor to uh, Time Force, and then it was a clean sweep for Time Ranger on Blue Ranger, and we don't even have to go into that. Like, if you want to know how better of a character. <laughs> isa is compared to lucas just go watch our time ranger stuff and then go listen to our time for stuff but uh the current score is 22 and a half to 21 and a half uh time ranger is in the lead and that lead is actually about to be expanded because uh we are actually giving a clean sweep for the yellow ranger to time ranger so four to zero in favor of time ranger so it's 26 and a half to uh 21 and a half for uh time force so yep. now we are going to move on to uh, our green slash black ranger, although in this case it's just a green ranger. So, uh, yeah, Sheon versus Crit, guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sheon, I think, easily because his backstory is actually fleshed out. And I like his more like soft, shy personality over Trip's uh, caffeine hype personality that got old really quick for me <laughs> <laughs> and his powers actually played a more prominent role in time ranger than trips did in time force so yeah how come they never tried to use trip psychic abilities to locate rancic any other times in the i don't series? know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that would have been way too easy the story would have been over by then if they did yeah. that then why do you establish him yeah. having six godlike <laughs> yeah i know why <laughs> <laughs> I guess as good as mine, man. But, but yeah, I would I would vote Shion too, just because I mean, well, for starters, Shion has the more tragic backstory. Like with Trip, we just know that he mm-hmm. came from the planet Zybri, and he has this gem on his forehead that gives him psychic powers. And he has some good individual episodes that you know that are great. Like I love the episode where he makes Mm. the electro booster for the first time, where he feels like he's not as useful to the team as the other Rangers. I get that, but those are just like, and then, I mean, I'm actually curious what Riz is going to say, because he said he was going to talk about it in this podcast. I do like the episode where he stands up to Eric too. Trip takes Mm -hmm. a stand. I I know Riz is going to have something to say about there, but I would argue that in Shion's case, like, Almost all of his character episodes are kind of geared toward and like an act. They all relate perfectly to his character arc. Like he, he's the sole survivor of a planet. In his backstory mm-hmm. episode, we find out that he's an alien who was raised in captivity. So he has like this natural, like innocent, like but kind of like lovey relationship with the Time Rangers because they're the closest thing to a family he's ever had in his whole life. Yeah. You know, we get yeah. episodes that establish that, like, he feels like he's being annoying to the Time Rangers, which, you know, kind of is, or, you know, he's not as strong as the others, you know, which kind of goes with his, him being a little more of a timid person who feels like he's a burden. Um, I mean, even that, even that movie episode, which, I mean, I, that movie episode in Time Force, I mean, okay, it was nice, mindless fun, but even that movie episode gives a little bit of character for him because he has to go through this hibernation and he feels like uh i'm being such a burden to my teammates and they're like no we love you we want to that's simple Mm -hmm. stuff i'm not saying that that's like deep character like shakespearean stuff but yeah it's it's something there's substance in that episode as opposed to time force where it's just oh we're in a movie the samurai movie tarzan movie oh and there's a mad max mm-hmm. reference because get it vernon wells was in mad max <laughs> like so you're never gonna let that go are you i don't hate the episode i love that episode but it's stupid it, yeah, but they, it's so fun. they weren't being it's subtle fun. about it they weren't being yeah, stu- yeah it was fun yeah. but at the same time they were not being subtle about it <laughs> yeah so i I think Sion had a much better written story, but mm-hmm. I can't just say that Trip doesn't deserve any recognition. Yeah. Because Trip is just so endearing as a character that I feel like I'm kicking a puppy if I don't give Trip any love. 
Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I'm going to continue my split. But, okay. I'm curious why you don't like the episode Fripp takes a stand, though, because you said that in the pre in our Time Force podcast. I think this is a good chance to bring it up here. Yeah, so Trip takes a stand. I just feel like Theon had more of a connection with that monster to want to help him. Uh, like the, Because Theon had that connection with the alien, because they both were aliens from another world, and they kind of delved into it more. Trip to see the guy who's down on his luck, but I didn't feel like they connected in the same way, and that kind of bugged me a lot, because I saw what great writing they did in Time Racer. So it's a very simple answer, but I didn't want to get into it in the Time Ranger thing, no, Time Force, oh, okay. because mm -hmm. I just wanted to give the kudos to Theon for that over here. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, I was trying to limit myself from saying anything I was trying to even limit mentioning Time Ranger names last night. <laughs> yeah, and I, I get I get it with like, you know, what you're saying about Trip. And here's the thing, like, um if, if I'm gonna be comparing Trip to like other Green Rangers, like let's say that we're doing something like uh I don't Forever know. Forever Green. Like, yeah, if we're do or I don't know, we're doing something like a Power Rangers Time Force versus Power Rangers uh like uh, Mystic Force, I guess. I mean, yeah. okay, then it, it would still be tough, but I would still give it to, I would still give it to Time Force because I prefer Trip to Xander. So when I I don't know if how I'd feel about that because Xander is honestly the only part of Mystic Force I liked. <laughs> okay, then maybe a more okay. I'm trying to think of a more. I like everybody but Nick. <laughs> um, yeah, how about how nobody about likes Nick. <laughs> Exactly. Jake, what? Jake and Trip. That's a fair comparison. Jake well, I mean, in, in that terrible. case, it's going to be Trip. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. But, but, like, I mean, the reason why I bring up Xander is because Xander and Trip are both great Green Rangers in the same yeah. way that, like, Trip and Sheon are both great characters. But I still think that, I mean, I think Trip is the better character compared to Xander while Agreed. with, uh, while with Sheon. I get what you're trying to say, and I understand that you want to give Trip the shout out here because yeah. he's a great Green Ranger. But I just yeah. feel like Sheon. Oh no, absolutely, Sheon is a better character, but Trip deserves a shout out, and I don't know how to give him a proper shout out because I do want to give Sheon the full point. Okay, that's fair. It just I'm conflicted because I feel like I'm kicking a puppy right now. You know, no, <laughs> I'm actually kind of conflicted myself, but not for the same reason. I kind of like. I know it's gonna sound selfish, but I kind of relate to Trip a little bit growing up because, like, I wasn't really the athletic one. I wasn't really like the, you know, guy that I could honestly relate to him on more of a like, oh, I was the nerdy kind of guy. Well, I still am a nerdy kind of guy. Let's get to get this one thing straight. Yeah, <laughs> but I wasn't. <laughs> You're also a very endearing person, Anthony, which is why I think you relate to Trip as well as you do. Is because. Trip is like a Labrador, yeah. a golden retriever, yeah. I guess. And yeah. he yeah. can't hate him because he's so friendly and loyal. Appreciate that. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> no, I, I can see it. Yeah. So. I, I still want to give the full vote to Sheon. Yeah. Uh, what about Sam here? Yeah. I'm, however, split, so I can't really be like, oh, I have to give the full point. Not that he doesn't deserve <laughs> it, it's just. My little yeah. slight bias towards Trip, especially yeah. Trip is a good character regardless of how I feel yeah. or not. Yeah. You want to split with Anthony? Yes. Yeah, Anthony wants to split. I'm still, in my mind, I'm going back and forth between giving it to Sion and splitting it because I'm still on defense. I'm going to give it to Sion, but then I'll, I'm going to think about it some more while we talk about the sweep <laughs> at the end. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to come back to this later on. I promise. Now, let's, let's go to sleep. Grief. So and you cannot tell me that Yuri has any redeeming qualities. No, like. Too. Here's the thing. Even if. Like, here's the thing. I think Yuri is a better character than you're giving her credit for, but at the same time, Jen stomps. Like, this is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. The yeah. I I even said this on my blog, like, I still, like, I, so, originally, ba based on, you know, when I 
originally we watched it. And keep in mind, I was like 21. This was like almost 10 years ago. Wow, I'm getting old, but uh, that's mm-hmm. beside the point. Um, wow, what a uh, man. man. You need your, you need your vitamins, Grandpa? Yeah, I, you're older than me, Riz. Stop that. That's the that's a mighty <laughs> fact that we don't have to bring up. We're talking about kids. <laughs> I just turned 30 and I have to go through every day now my wife Dude, telling me I'm OG Chan. I'm turning th- I'm turning 31. I'm turning 32 literally in May, y'all. Well, yeah. To but, me. This yeah. is with me, really. So yeah. But, 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 uh, with that being said, <laughs> but uh with that being said, like originally based on when I originally watched this and Kind of a little bit also based on just like the general consensus opinions in Sentai fandom. I had Yuri as S tier. I still had her below Tsurahime, but now, I mean, I'm not, I have her as a B tier pink. I still, I get like, you know, the issues that we kind of had with, you know, the conclusion of her character arc and that really bogged her down with me. And you even saw my time on my Time Ranger blog, I have her listed as my least favorite Ranger from Time Ranger. So yeah. I, I'm I'm definitely in the spirits here, but I don't think she's a terrible pink. And maybe that's just because I've seen there's not that many Sentai pinks that yeah. really stand out. Like I don't like like in in Power Rangers, we have a lot of really great pink rangers. It, yeah. Even though Jen still yes. ends up being the best easily, mm-hmm. but in in Super Sentai, there's not as many great pinks. So Yuri is technically up there, but by a technicality, and that's the problem. Because yeah. to me, she's a D tier character. I'm sorry. I'm gonna stick by what I said before, like <laughs> a couple of podcasts. Because see, I think I put her in D tier, and I thought I would change my opinion on her and bring her up to C tier by now, after I let it kind of cook in the oven, as you may. But mm-hmm. nah, she's still a D tier to me, man. I mean, I, I I will say that I think like I get your you guys' complaints about how like this desire for her to capture Doniro in the yeah. in uh, n- not the last episode but like the beginning of the end game arc mm-hmm. like that seemed to come out of nowhere. I will say that I kind of feel like they hinted at that being the case in the uh, I think it was the ten- whichever episode was her backstory episode in the first batch of episodes that we did i think they established that there but even if that was the case which maybe it even isn't but you guys still have a point that 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 point wasn't hammered home yeah nearly as much as it should have been my i think my problem with it is if you're going to hold on to the reveal for that long you need to make it have impact that was day one information that they held off until the final day it's like, if they, so it was more of let, like, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Let me make a comparison for y'all that might help. Remember how I used to call Takaru hot garbage this, hot garbage that? He's a terrible yep. red. Oh my God, I freaking hate this guy. But then when the big and reveal then, happened, yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, wait, this guy's amazing. What am I talking about? Yeah, Yuri didn't, it. we didn't get that with Yuri. <laughs> No, like yeah. Yuri is just kind of left to flounder, yeah, just... and yeah, mm-hmm. I have other thoughts, but I'm going to save that for miscellaneous. Yeah. yeah. So we want to give the clean sweep to Pink uh, for time yeah. force. To, yeah, easily. Okay. Yeah, easily. there is no contest <laughs> I, here. I, I I think this is I just the, the four on six Ranger. Just sweep. call it. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, yeah, here's the thing. I, so. I'm going to say this right here. I, I still think Naoto was a good character up until the very end, but here's the thing. I have a lot of bias toward Eric, and honestly, Same even, here. even when I watched Time Ranger mm-hmm. way back in the day and really enjoyed it to the point where I was hyping you up for you guys to watch it, I still preferred Eric to Naoto. There was never a time where I preferred Naoto to Eric, and that yeah, hasn't I do wanna, changed. I do want to say this. Yeah, I do want to say this, and I'm not going. This isn't enough for me to give like a split point for Nato, but I, it's something I do want to acknowledge. Him being never truly a good guy is something I did like about him because it makes him yeah. kind of like he's like the only Sentai Ranger or Power Ranger for that matter to kind of stand on that gray line, and it, I did like that about him, but. It, it that, I don't think that's enough for me to warrant a split with Eric, given how 
you know, like Eric's like a top three Power Ranger of all time. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I said in our original podcast, uh, when we, when Time Fire debuted, I mean, if you're comparing which character is better, Dub Kaiba or or Japanese Kaiba. It's Japanese Kaiba without even any question. And now it was dub Kaiba. You're a you're a third rate time ranger with a fourth rate mech. And yeah. sorry, I will never yeah. get over that. I'm sorry. I'll never get over that. Can we just take a moment to acknowledge the fact that Time Force is technically the dub of Time Ranger? Yeah. And you're saying Naoto is the dub version of Eric. Yes, I'm yeah. saying that. I mean, he, I mean he 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 kind of is when you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So let's put that four on the board, my man. Yeah. Yeah. And here we're is my wor- here is my worst nightmare ever. Well, we we're tied again. Past the Rangers, and we're tied again, thirty to thirty. My worst okay. nightmare is here. So oh, no. <laughs> there is stuff that I do want to talk about here because I don't think our scoreboard captured certain things that make time force better for me because like i like i said earlier i think it had a better story in time ranger but i think there's something to be said for the strong character moment with the love story um to be said with wes and his dad's relationship um there's also something to be said for on the other side of the coin, Domon and his mm-hmm. uh, Hanami. That's a big deal as well, but that's one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'll, I, I think I'll bounce off of this. I think the team chemistry in Time Ranger was significantly better overall. I M- mostly because of like Domon's existential crisis, ISA's secret. And all the stuff yeah. they had more moments to bond over, and time time force doesn't have things like that. Yeah. So I think the team chemistry in Time Ranger is something that I think needs to be acknowledged. Yeah, I I would agree with you on that. If you want to give it one point there for the four of us. Yeah. Because I think that's how miscellaneous works, right? We all agree on one yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just extra bonus stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does Anthony agree with that though? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I think the love story is another point in the favor of Time Force here, which brings us back. Yeah, to I, Jen and, I, that, I do Jen, agree with, yeah. Jen and Wes is the love story, yeah. But yeah. then could we give Domon and Hanami a point for Time Ranger then in that regard? Yeah. <laughs> because that was one of the best, especially if we want to bleed into the Time Ranger uh, tribute episode in Go Kaiser. Which yeah, really no, brought it. Yeah, but then also no, look at the Wild Force crossover. <laughs> okay, here's the thing that that Wild Force crossover, I, like, okay, Wes and Jen's moment where they finally get to see each other again, like, but before the final battle, that was a yeah. great moment. Love yeah. that moment, but yeah, I kind of wish that the team up that it during the picnic scene they gave more than just showing like. Wes running up, like, I don't know, you could have cut that scene out. Well, okay, I don't think you should have, because it was still a great moment, but you could have cut yeah. that scene out where Eric is hitting on Taylor. And no, we needed that scene. It. Yeah, I know, but you could have, yeah. okay, no, what's something else you could have cut? You could have cut the scene where Max is hitting on Nadira and yeah. shown in some scene where Wes and Jen are together a little bit more. Like, yeah. 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 Or the scene where Katie beats Danny in an arm wrestling contest. I mean, those are funny scenes, but I don't know. Well, I feel like they I think they maybe... were I think that scene that you're talking about as a whole, the picnic, it's the one thing I wish the other crossover team ups that we've done had. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I think I think the Lightspeed Time Force team up the ending thing where they trade Zack is kind of weak. I think they could have done something Time... a bit more fun there. Time for Lightspeed needed another episode. It did. Yeah. yeah, it did. It needed to be. It needed to be a two-parter badly. Could we <laughs> need to be a two-parter and change uh, Viper to being a uh, Jinxer. Jinxer. Cut, cut that. Yeah. Down the hill. Cut. Cut that yeah. episode where K- 
Katie goes back in time and to make room for another part for like for time. No, no, no. Yeah, I got a better exactly. idea. I got a way better idea. Cut the movie Cut episode down. Of... Hang the on. Movie one. Hang on. <laughs> Cut an episode out of Lightspeed for that godforsaken, terrible two-parter crossover with Lost Galaxy and Lightspeed. You're in for a big disappointment. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, no, we that, that, in that episode. That that delivery of that line has always been bad. Yeah, I know. Ever be I just, bad. <laughs> you that that line delivery. It wasn't was even Danny Slavin. That was that's funny. I was like, that's not yeah. even Danny Slavin. I was like, well, also, Leo, on, on top like of it, Leo's though, it's very shame. clearly read off of a cue card level of bad. <laughs> yeah. And Leo's voice. Is completely unsettled. It's like, I mean, to bring up Yu-Gi-Oh again, it's like the how they change Mai's voice actress, like between seasons three and mm -hmm. four, and it's like we yeah, clearly tell so they're weird. different people. But um, okay, what were we like? Okay, so did we want to split the? Do we want to split each for? Because I mean, here's the thing: I get what Riz is saying about the the, the romance lover. story, and obviously. If we're comparing Tatsuya and Yuri versus Wes and Jen, I do give it to Wes and Jen, but yeah, yeah. but Domon and, and Hanami. Domon and Honami. So, okay, so here's my thing. Also good. No, I think that I, should be a point for each of them. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just say okay. a point for each of them, or we don't even put a point down because they both negate each other anyway. Yeah. That'd I don't be think easier to code. Down. Yeah, <laughs> be easier to um, But there is other stuff that I liked about Time Force that I think there's stuff about Timers I also want to talk about, but I do want to get this out the way first. Because okay, I know me and Patrick are going to go off for a little while on the social aspects of this thing. Okay, okay, then fine. Yeah, <laughs> because I know we're going to have a like a five minute session of me and Patrick going back and forth about this mental health stuff. But yeah, I think one thing about Time Force that <clears throat> I think it's unique for some of Power Rangers. Note my word, some mm -hmm. is this idea of redemption. It's not just Ramsick that has redemption. Mm -hmm. It's not just Madeira that has it's, redemption. It's Mr. Eric. Collins has redemption. Mm -hmm. Eric has redemption. Eric has redemption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much redemption in Time Force where you start off hating Mr. Collins, thinking he's an asshole. You start off thinking Eric is a prick. You start off thinking Rancic is this end-all, be-all, badass, evil guy. And you think Nadira is just an idiot. But by the end of it, we come to love them all so much. And like we talked about earlier, those characters flourish in this season. But the reason they flourish is we have this theme of redemption and overcoming your faults to become a better person for tomorrow mm -hmm. because <clears throat> mr collins going out in the end of time three-parter and helping people that is a whole season of payoff oh yeah eric T and west dad would never <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the Eric and West dynamic doesn't get amazing. Like it's all of them. It's amazing throughout. But hang on. The way I'm wanting to say this is, Eric was kind of an ass to West even up until the finale. But then a year later, when they're at the Wild Force team up, what what Eric is just more. I don't know the word for it, but I just thought when he he's more chill. That he's more, that, but still is not the word here. It's more reverent of his friendship with them. He actually calls he actually calls them friends. But if you look at his character in that team up, he doesn't go out and run to hug them, but he's in the background smiling and nodding. But it's not the smile and nod of like a soldier. It's the smile and nod of a I'm a, calm, I, I'm a friend. A I, calm, along. Yeah. I really respect you guys, but I don't feel like I deserve to go up and hug you guys because of what I did to y'all last year. And he still, I, I think he still has that bit of guilt, 
even in the wild force because he never goes up and directly like hugs trip or hugs katie or anything he's kind of there in the background nodding and smiling and excited and he even says my friends a year ago and he's talking about their friends that he like the people that he found annoying becoming the best people he could ever met i think that says a lot about the redemption of eric mm -hmm. and goes to even further him being the goat six ranger you're you're muted nate sorry not again <laughs> sorry about that I, i'll give you that i'll give you that point for redemption and for eric and mr collins for sure um that that's why i'm gonna give that vote mm -hmm. there i i don't know as much about rancic and nadira because i feel like because i feel like the redemption okay nadira maybe but nadira like, definitely nadira yeah. like as, as much yeah. as I from being Nadira went from being a spoiled brat to realizing humans aren't all bad and then coming to terms with that and then convincing her dad that, hey, humans are not the enemy here. I think yeah. that's a big deal for Nadira. Yeah, okay. Yeah. As much as I wish that her redemption was kind of foreshadowed in that episode where she went on a date with Lucas, that's my main reason why I hate that episode because they could yeah. use the D to set up her redemption. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I can see how her redemption is great, but I mean, in terms of Rancic, I mean, okay, like he always had a lot of love for Nadira, but I, I don't feel like his redemption was at like, I don't know, with like, we, we said like last time, like, you know, we have to pick a lane with Rancic because sometimes yeah. I feel like they're hinting that he's pure evil, especially with how he, uh, you know, with how he treated Dr. Ferrix and turned him into Frax. Yeah. To the point where his redemption it's powerful but i just feel like it was that had been like something that the series was building up to for the entire bit of it yeah so i might disagree with you a little bit on rancic but it with but eric mr collins and nadira that's enough to give me the vote for redemption. yeah yeah i'll i'll i'll, I'll yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um Anthony? i do want to give Is, does Anthony agree? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I, 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 thought, I was going to let Patrick say something first. Oh, okay. No, I was going to go into a different that, topic. That's why I was trying to get Anthony. I was going to go into a different topic. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you say what you got to say first. Hmm. I do agree. It's just, I don't know, like... Cause I don't want to split it again, but I kind of do. Well, I mean, we don't well, have to split, split it. For split here. You're not splitting. It's just a vote for time force. There's no vote yeah, for time range or on this. It's just, yeah, we're just saying, adding points. We're just adding. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Do you want to give the redemption point to uh, time force? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, okay. Then we'll give it to that. Now we got it tied thirty-one One. to thirty-one. All right, Patrick. You want to do social yeah. mental health stuff now, or what are we doing? Well, no, I got, I have, I have, I have one point I want to give to time, uh, time force real quick, and it's okay. The ending and the beginning, I think, are things that need to be talked about because I don't like how Time Rangers beginning was kind of forced, was a little bit too fast for its own good, and how uh, Tatsuya had to say goodbye to his team, how they were like sucked to a wormhole kind of spontaneously yeah. and how yeah time, I for forgot about time, that. time forces opening is probably one of like maybe like the top two power rangers beginnings easily What's the other that two-parter is incredible uh in space i think the in okay. space two-parter is really good yeah, yeah um, i'd say and then yeah and then the final episode for Time Force, where they actually get proper goodbyes. You know, the Silver Guardians give a salute on their way out. Mr. Collins is there to help see them off and everything. Mm -hmm. And it implies that they had, you know, maybe like a week or a few days or so to spend more time with them. And, you know, you know, I have like final like events together and like all this stuff. It, it just feels more proper. It's yeah. It feels like a more proper send-off is what you're trying to say. 
Yes. And yeah. it's that is always a point I'm going to give the Power Rangers over Super Sentai, and it's because like Fox Kids and stuff was always open to letting them air multi parters where uh, whatever channel Sentai airs on always wants things. You're you're going to get one episode a week. And I think that does no, hurt Sentai in some case. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to acknowledge that for Time Force because it, it makes the beginning and ending flow better. I agree with you on that. Yep. Same here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, same here. So. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. But Patrick, now... Now to the social commentary thing, because this this is – and it's one of the things that really, really made me – I think as much as I like Wes, Jen, and Eric compared to their Sentai counterparts and everything, I think I like Time Rangers' overall core cast better because of this one thing. And it's the weight of their actions – the effect it has on the characters themselves. We saw in that episode with Domon early in the season where he had that virus or that mental condition where he thought he was still in the future. And, you know, he went to that place Mm -hmm. where he was looking at the sunset and he was like, this is where I played when I was a kid. And, like, he had that breakdown and stuff. That episode was incredible in hindsight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Given everything you know, we know about Doma now, and then like <clears throat> the stress on, on ISA shoulders of he's facing death, but he doesn't want his teammates to worry about him, so he yeah. kind of carries that baggage in him the whole time. And Trip carrying that guilt of he thinks he's more annoying than he is, and he has to constantly be reassured that no, you're not. But that self-doubt yeah. in him keeps telling him that no matter how much they tell me that, I still think I'm a problem. Mm-hmm. And then even going into ISA, there's that thing of you see it a lot that the weight of my choice being taken away from me versus do I have my own influence over my own future. Like That scene of him sitting in the hospital when he was – you know, like when the executives came in and tried to talk him into going to the board meeting and everything, you could just see that internal conflict of him almost ripping himself in half mentally and emotionally. And all of these moments, I think it just, it adds so much more tension to the story and it brings awareness to like legitimate social and emotional mental problems yeah. that we have. Yeah. Of like self-doubt and you know, not wanting others to worry and, you know, do I want to do this because I'm told I have to versus do I want to do this because I want to do this? Like, these are problems that people deal with all mm-hmm. the time, it every day, them- at different levels of life. And I think it makes the cast more relatable than the Time Force yeah. cast. Yes. I, I have to agree with you there. And, but the more you talk about it, the more I I see little bits of me in Doman and ISA and Theon and a little bit of Topsia. Gion. Yeah. Like yeah. all of all four of those characters' mental and emotional problems they go through are things that over the last ten years I've gone through hundreds of times. Yeah. And it it really and somewhat especially because spider-man is like a character that means a lot to me because of his relatability because of all the stuff he goes through that kind of stuff means something to me and it matters to me when it comes to discussing characters and that's why this time ranger made me emotional a lot of places because of those character moments because i felt that mental pain that they had gone through and it it's definitely something that i think we need to give a point to time ranger for because yeah and if, and if you want to <clears throat> and if you really want to see how uh <clears throat> how it um how it's handled better in time ranger like the, the main arc that we're talking about where uh you know ryuya comes in and takes over in in the time ranger arc 
the overarching theme is like, you know, Ryuya has just revealed that like everything that they've accomplished is stuff that has always been scripted in the timeline. And they're legitimately wondering like, mm -hmm. are we doing this because we want to, or are we doing this because it's been mapped out? That's where, yeah. that's the big thing that they, when they finally like stand up to Ryuya, they say, we're going to do this, mm -hmm. but we're going to do this our way because we do want to do this. While yeah. with, in the Time Force arc, it's the bigger dilemma is, Alex come has come here and has taken over for Wes, and he's kind of a jerk. Alex isn't Wes. We want Wes back. We were better when we had yeah. Wes. Like, yeah. Which okay, perfectly fine, serviceable arc. I'm not trying to badmouth that, but yeah, it's yeah. a much deeper thing in Time Ranger. But I also think that, given all that circumstances, it, it can also be seen as a bit of an empowering message because, given all these issues they work through they all overcame them. Like, Domon overcame his concerns about, like, well, if I'm never going to see Hanami again, but he still made it work. And that scene at the end of the Gokaiser tribute episode killed me. <laughs> when he was sitting in the, yeah. the, the Gozu drill, the Gozu Rex, looking at that picture and stuff, and how ISA was, like, reassured that no man, we're, we, you're one of us. We'll treat you however you want us to treat you and stuff. And how ISA managed to take control of, he managed to do things his way, and like say, like yeah, you you can do whatever you want to. Just don't let anybody tell you that you can't. And that's kind of where the the ultimate message came from. And it, it just it's it's good stuff. It's very. Yeah. Like it's not in your face about it and you really have to sit down and think about it. And when you do it, the, it adds like hundreds of layers of depth to the season that I think time force is like, it felt more hollow. And that's part of, part of one of the reasons why I was so harsh on it in our review last night. And I just couldn't quite put like thought to mouth. But then when you started well, mentioning mental health, yeah, it, it all kind of like came to me and hit me that yeah. that's what time force was missing. Yeah. And I do and, want to preface here. I don't think we should try to bad mouth the great chemistry that the time force cast has, but oh, yeah. I feel like the chemistry that they have is stuff that these actors just naturally had. Like yeah. if you were to like mm -hmm. put, I don't know, like if you were to take like completely different actors that didn't have the same amount of chemistry it wouldn't have worked as well. While yeah, yeah. in Time Ranger, the chemistry between the actors is there, but there's also writing that like completely mm -hmm. exploits just how great yeah. that chemistry is. I mean, yeah, like if you look at the if you look at interviews scene with, where oh, okay, you, you go, you go. I, I was gonna say if you look at like interviews with like Aaron Cahill, Jason Font, look mm -hmm. at our Anime Secrets YouTube channel for some of those interviews actually. Here's a little plug. Um, <laughs> we, Aaron Cahill said, I love my team. Those guys are some of my closest friends. Uh, Jason Font's like her younger brother or maybe older brother. I forget who's older and younger. Yeah. But they have like that family connection. Um, mm -hmm. They all did. Like anytime they get together and you look at the photos that a group gets mm -hmm. together, they have that chemistry. And I think that's something... Yeah, you see a lot because when I met Hunter Dano and uh, Jordan Fight a week and a half ago, um, I was talking to them about their chemistry and how I always think it's so cool that Saban Disney. Look, at least Saban and Hasbro. I don't know much about the Disney cast because you don't see them in cons very often, but when they do get these casts together at the respective cons from those seasons they all just seem like they're all best friends and that they genuinely want to be there for each other. It's not like a, oh, I'm coming here just to make money on selling autographs to these nerds. Yeah. It's also a way for them to reconnect with friends and family. And I mm -hmm. think that's pretty awesome. But to Patrick's point, Time Ranger just built in that story to make it hit home harder because we were able to relate to four of the six characters on that. Mm -hmm. let, 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 me, let me put it to you like this. Like, 
Time Force is kind of, and I'm not trying to badmouth it because this is still, you know, they're lucky to have it and it is there and we shouldn't talk about whether or not it was there, but like the chemistry mm-hmm. that the cast has in Time Force, that's just naturally stuff. Like Aaron <laughs> Cato and Jason yes. Ponder naturally like that. But if you were to take this same writing, have the exact same characters and have it with a cast that doesn't have I mean, at least as far as I've been able to see, like on it, like, okay, I don't want to say the Operation Overdrive cast because that would be doing it a disservice. Let's let's use, let's take a different cast from like a series that isn't bad, but like, I don't know, maybe, I don't know that, okay, I don't even want to say Ninja Storm because I feel like the two actors that played the uh, Thunder Rangers seem to be okay, kind of close, but what, what, let's go with the Lost Galaxy cast because I don't really mm-hmm. see them together as much like if you had danny slavin playing wes and you had uh archie cow playing lucas and etc cetera, etc cetera. well archie cow playing lucas would be no different than lucas playing lucas well okay yeah but, <laughs> but really like, <laughs> i don't feel yeah. the chemistry there with that cast isn't as strong maybe you could get yeah. away with the lightspeed rescue cast because i feel like they seem to be legitimately I, close, I don't but... know are they who's on my a lot of the Lightspeed Rescue cast. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Al- Allison McGinnis, Rhett Fisher, and Ron Rogue, what, whoever played uh, Captain Mitchell, they seem to be pretty close. But... Oh, yeah. No, that's yeah. the Mitchell family, yeah. you mean? Yeah. But yeah, they have a Facebook page yeah. for that. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, the Time Force cast seems the only other cast I would say that seems like genuinely close and like on a friendship level is the other GOAT Power Rangers season, the Power Rangers in Space cast. I would disagree mm-hmm. with that being the mm-hmm. only other one. As, well, yeah, much, but... as much crap as we give Megaforce, that oh yeah, that, that those guys love each other. Each other, those yeah, guys love each other. Yeah. I mean, okay, if you took that cast and maybe put them in the put them in the Time Force roles and maybe had Andrew Gray act a little bit better, I mean, th- this would have worked. But yeah, that's because this cast has a lot of legitimate chemistry. But it's just because of their chemistry that the show works. If you take a yeah. cast that doesn't work well as much off each other, I really hate to say this, but I don't think Time Force would be looked upon as great. Oh as no, the absolutely it not. It's, no, it's because of the cast, but, and it also comes down mm-hmm. to skill. Because you made a really good point. Andrew Gray's acting would be a huge disservice to Wes as a character, mm-hmm. and that just mm-hmm. speaks to how amazing an actor Jason Font mm-hmm. is. Yeah. And that's but kind of a reason why I'm so upset that the half the cast was so poorly managed. Could you imagine if Lucas, Katie, and Trip got their Sentai counterpart storyline and we had a scene in Time Force with Lucas on the ground in the rain, with the rest of them standing around his unconscious body, and Wes is standing there like Afraid that he just lost a friend, but with and the even, Time Force cast, and even Eric, and Time who Force would be, like him you know, and yeah, and then Eric would be off in the background, like staring. Could you imagine how much better Time Force would have been that if you had right there? Yeah, like I'm sorry in space, but you can't compete with something like that. Even as much as I love you, you add that kind of depth and like, like like the social issues, like the mental issues and the character and everything to the time force cast. We're talking, we're talking best in series stuff. Yeah. (laughs) No, but even best in franchise stuff. Yeah. Best, yeah. Best in franchise. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I was telling Nathan, I think I mentioned in a podcast yesterday. I don't remember what I mentioned where now, but if we're looking at every season that came after in space, because I think in space had a bit of a cheat code, with seasons leading into the in space yeah, storyline, it, it, it wasn't a, it wasn't a standalone season, yeah. right? But if you look at all the standalone seasons that came after, we have like twenty five years of them. Mm-hmm. I think Time Force has one of the most solid ones out of any of them, with the maybe yeah. the exception of SPD. But even then, I still think Time Force has the edge over SPD. I'm sorry, Pat. I know you don't agree, but um, <laughs> I I think. I think they are the best single season of Rangers in the franchise. And it has something to do with that uh, camar- camaraderie that we see with the actors. 
and also the skill. Yeah, yeah. Because Aaron Cahill has gone on to do like how many Hallmark movies? I don't know. A lot. <laughs> so many <had> to count. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, she had she, talent for that. She is pretty high up in their food <clears throat> chain, let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah, Jason Font mm-hmm. has done a couple of things after as well. Like he just got into mm-hmm. some TV show last year. I forget what it's called. So, he, you know, they're still active too. Yeah. yeah. Is so, uh, Tripp's actor, is he still modeling or no? He might be. Maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> so, I but, guess but that's we something we can I, put as a Patrick. point. I said that's just something. Like going back to the whole, my, the, my whole thing I was talking about earlier, that's probably a point you could put for Time Ranger. And that's going to tie us back up. <laughs> so it is. I'm waiting for Nathan to put that one in there so we have a tie again. We've got to figure out what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I'm running out of things to give points to at this point, guys. Um. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, if I'm going to pick one other thing, I feel like... I know Riz said that like he wanted to give the time travel... like In terms of like the time travel rule, the time force... But I honestly feel like Time Ranger took more advantage of, like, you know, the time travel thing. And I I, I think, you know, one episode, uh, maybe, like, you know, not only would just, uh, you know, like, they they take almost every opportunity. Like, Doman's love story with Onami, like, it creates, like, a like an insane type of love story where, like, two different lovers from a different time period are falling in love with each other. But I would also say... Ken and uh, West. Yeah. But uh, same thing there. Okay, but then I would also say, like, uh, in t- a couple of the filler episodes, kind of take advantage of it. And one uh, Time Ranger episode I would say is uh, that episode where they meet this painter who's struggling, but in the future he's going to be really famous. Because I mean, again, like, I kind of wish that Time Force did an episode like this, where like they yeah. meet someone who they know is going to be famous. Because I mean. I mean, imagine if, like, you go back in time to, like, uh, you know, the 1940s and you meet this guy who's, you know, you know, while you're from the future and you meet this guy who's, like, created, like, this spider-themed superhero. And then you say, wait a minute, what's your name? And then he says, oh, my name is Stanley Lieber. And it's like, holy sh- Oh my God! This is Stan Lee. He's going to be Stan Lee, but you can't <laughs> tell him. But you can't tell him that he's going to be famous because yeah. that would screw up the whole timeline. And, and I everything. get what you're saying there, but in that specific example with the painter, that that just kind of touches on the idea of time travel in the sense that they have knowledge from the future, but that doesn't help Time Ranger's case for the poor time travel execution stuff as a whole. I think. That's a small piece that works, but in the grander scheme of Time Rangers, time travel, shenanigans, I don't see it. I mean, the only other thing I wanted to say, but here's the sad thing: I, I feel like maybe, maybe if if we agree that like Patrick kind of, uh, if Patrick's thing already kind of touched upon this, then we don't have to give the point. But I would argue that, like. I get Riz's like overarching theme of redemption for Time Force, but in terms of like Time Ranger, like the overarching theme seems to be like, you know, this idea of like, are we really in control of our own destinies or not? Like, you know, and whether we are, we're able to do things, whether we question it. I feel like Time Force tries to touch upon that. Yeah. With, you know, the stuff with Wes and his it, father. I think but, it half ass it in Time Force. They do half ass it in time for us, but I think that's the entire crux behind Patrick's point. Yeah. Well, okay. it, I, I kind of I kind of led into that excuse yeah. also because they kind of go hand in hand. But yeah. But yeah. But I would say that like, but honestly, even to just kind of go off that point, like every Super Sentai series and every Power Ranger series, maybe to some extent too i feel like has overarching themes like yeah. mm-hmm. you know like when we're talking about like uh like when we're talking about a go kiter you know it's all about like a group of pirates trying to you know live up to a legacy that they didn't really want to live up to but yeah. they kind of got forced into mm-hmm. and then they discover just how important this legacy is and with you know 
Samurai with Samurai Sentai Shinkinder, it's all about uh, you know, them trying to like, you know, the people having a bond of a samurai, even if it might have been fake because of Takeru's uh, whole yeah life and everything. I would say that you know the whole message with Time Ranger of like with fate and destiny. Not only is it a much deeper message than you know we're used to seeing in a power in a super synthetic series, but I would argue that it's like it's <clears throat> in the most perfect way way more powerful than like a kid you would expect from a kid show like this is a huge mm -hmm. adult message yeah. where you're kind of where it really questions the boundaries of whether or not we're really in control of our own fate and the funny thing is is that it leaves it is that there is a lot of ambiguity there you know oh, yeah. there's like, because how do we know that the time, because they never establish, how do we know that when the Time Rangers stand up to uh, Captain Ryuya, they're, they, they, it wasn't scripted out for them to say, we're doing this because we want to, you know, and the series mm -hmm. never actually officially, you know, maps that out. And it just kind of leaves it. And, you know, we don't know if it's up to fate or if it, or if you're making your own fate. And I feel like Time ranger just tackles that and just the overarching message that is trying to send better not just than time force but in any other sentai and i think yeah. when if we talk about the overarching theme stuff i mean if we're going to give the uh overarching theme of like redemption that riz wants to give to time force we kind of have to give just the overarching themes of like fate and destiny to time ranger i mm -hmm. completely understand where you're coming from but i still mm -hmm. think when Patrick and I were going through the entire character struggle, I think we've already hit on that quite a bit. Yeah, it was all kind so of one. I, I'm not certain I can give another point for that. I mean, like, I, I guess, I guess I mean, the tiebreaker is which we can use points based off of what season we personally prefer. Well, there is one I think thing that I needs to, to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Alex versus Rio Rioya. Oh man. Okay, this is gonna <laughs> well, have to be a tiebreaker. I mean, here's the thing: we all hate Re <laughs> We all hate Ryuya, but I yeah. think it's a good hatred because he is and a not for me. That they not wrote. for me. No, they wrote him. <laughs> intentionally to be unlikable yeah and in a way he's kind of the main antagonist of time ranger if you want to be really picky about it so i think that like alex to be perfectly honest with you eh. <laughs> don't, I, don't, I don't think his role in time force was that is as significant as it could have been but really his role in time ranger was immense so I know that he's a he's a douchebag, but I do like him a lot more <laughs> because he's a good love to hate him character. I'm gonna let Anthony answer this one before I give any more thoughts. <laughs> Out of pettiness, I'm not I'm not giving him the point. The point goes to Alex. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Riz, you can call it petty. Say? You can call it oh, like uh, come on, Anthony. No, no. <laughs> no I, I gotta, I gotta agree with Patrick on that. <laughs> You're giving the point. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm honestly gonna give it to Ryu yet too, just because, like, it. Mm. I mean. I don't know. He's a character that I still hate because I mean he's a horrible person. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, but that's the point. He, he did his job. <laughs> yeah, he did his job. You, they wrote him to be hateable. So. No, not under miscellaneous. He goes under supporting cast, right? Yeah, we can do that. Hold on. Would he? Yeah, yeah he would. He's supporting cast. What are you talking about? Yeah. Okay. Then he's for yeah, a time force. We're gonna give one point for Anthony added to supporting cast. And three. Time and then Ranger we're add... yep. three. I two, regret nothing. I regret four. nothing. <laughs> Here we have 
the final score, unless – does anybody want to add anything else? No. Mm, let me think about this now. <laughs> I kind of like the tie we had originally, to be honest with you. I thought that was really fun. Nah. But no, but, but, I – But honestly, the fact that it's so close, I feel like it's a statement that, like, both of these shows are good, and I feel yeah, like yeah. it's ultimately up to your own tastes. Now, yeah. one thing I would want to ask, I think, Nate, going forward, I want to add a category for rewatchability. Okay. Uh, and, because... you know, we could add... Uh, okay, for, for that, we could just add this to the miscellaneous thing real quick. Yeah, for right Probably. now, it's miscellaneous, but I think next time, add it to, like, the core thing that we do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll add it to the next time. I think I'm going to get some They're hate both for rewatchable. this. I'd rather, if I had to pick one to rewatch, that's what I'm going to go with here. If I had okay. to pick one to rewatch, I'd rewatch Time Force all day. Same. Okay. Hmm. Uh, if but, I had to pick one, if I had to, if I could just say rewatchability for both, yeah, I would rewatch them both. But if I got to pick one, Time Force. Uh, would you pick Time Force two, Anthony? Yes. Okay, then I'm gonna add two here for you and Riz. What about you and uh, Patrick? I I would pick Time Ranger just because the the depth that yeah. we we I just got done talking about makes it more and i want to go back and rewatch it again at some point in time mm -hmm. to see what other little yeah. things that i may have missed and because there, there's probably a lot more to this with its like subtle messaging than what we caught on to the first watch time. we have another podcast and, like a year from now with patrick revealing all the stuff that he didn't see the first time <laughs> <laughs> here's, a, here's, a, here's one of those spiral notebooks 20 pages worth let's go <laughs> <laughs> I've been writing this stuff down for three weeks <laughs> I mean this is kind of tough for me too I would probably uh, I mean here's the thing I've rewatched Time Force like multiple times I've only like this was my first time rewatching Time Ranger after I finished it originally I might mm. honestly just kind of looking at the deeper elements, I might feel tempted to just watch, uh, you know, Time Ranger a lot more just because it's a much deeper story while admitting fully mm -hmm. that, I don't know, maybe I'll just rewatch Time Ranger again and then just kind of wish you that. You can split uh, your vote on this too, you know. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I'm feeling more tempted to split my vote just because I also do have bias toward Time Force because I did grow yeah. up watching it. So. Yeah. Okay. We all did. Well, I did yeah. too. But I'm, yeah, we all did. Same same out. Riz it because he. No wait, you watched it. You watched the grown up, didn't you, Riz? What time force? No. Yeah. No, I didn't. Okay, so he. Yeah. I watched was time right. force for the first time ten years ago. Okay, hmm. then uh, I'm gonna add this. Okay, one wow, it's difference. still one point difference. Wow, this is. I, you know, but you know what the worst part yeah. about this whole thing is? I, I've been kind of debating over which show is better in my head, and I was really hoping that this podcast would prove to me once and for all which show is doesn't better. Help me. Doesn't help me. No. I'm still going to have a headache <laughs> for the next 10 years trying to decide which show is better. Because to <laughs> me, I'm looking at the numbers, right? I see the numbers here. And I don't know if it's my Power Ranger bias or something, but I still think Time Force is the better one. Yeah, but, I mean, even then, like, the only way I could definitively see if, like, Time Ranger or Time Force was the better show is if this was, like, a blowout thing. But here's the thing. If this was going to be a blowout... We wouldn't be then, doing this. Yeah, we wouldn't be doing it. It's yeah. like... That's you why know, we like, didn't do... Gekki Ranger Jungle versus Jungle Fury. Fury. And Gekki Ranger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or Shane why we're not going... Samurai. Samurai. And mm -hmm. why we're not going to do Ginga Man in Lost Galaxy. I'm just going to say that now. We yeah, are not yeah. doing that. Lost Galaxy will get destroyed in that discussion. <laughs> but I mean, I'm accepted. 
I feel like <laughs> Mega Ranger and Power Rangers in space might be a de- decent. That one could be fun. To do. Space would win. Honestly, when yeah. we do get to it, just because of the the total clash, I would love to do an RPM versus Go on Oh, that'll be <laughs> yeah. Just because that'll be very that video fun. would be a mess. That you video would be a disaster. <laughs> huh? We could do a Goat Power Ranger season mass up. Let's do in space versus time force. Yeah. Oh, that'll be a manslaughter. Honestly. Yeah, we gotta do <laughs> yeah. that should be our next <laughs> That'd be hard. But we still have to do uh was it Dino Fury that won over Dino Charge? Yeah. Because we probably do that, that versus one. Dino Thunder. I think Dino Fury won. Yeah. No, yeah, but we still have to <laughs> do that versus I like Dino Thunder, but Dino Fury no. is just yeah. No, no, no. Dino I, Fury I don't agree with that. Hard. I'm sorry. I don't agree with that. Really? No, no, no. We we have, we're not, we're actual, not saying Dino so Thunder. We're saying Dino Fury beat Dino Charge. Oh, well, well, okay, okay, okay. I'm about to say Dino yeah, Thunder. I was like, Dino Thunder? Like, well, wait a minute now. We no, I would Dino say Dino Fury is Dino better than Dino Thunder. But that's I would, too. Yeah, you're going yeah. to have to disagree with me on that one. That's, that's a hard <laughs> disagree on that one. Hard. But at least for this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, with a score of a 36 and a half, to, uh, to Time Force is 35 and a half. Time Ranger has won, but here's the thing. It's such a tight score that this is really like, this should be a statement at just how great both of these shows are. And yeah. you should watch both of them. They're both great. Ob- and truth be told, the fact that this is so tight, this should just prove that maybe it's better to just say that one isn't better than the other because they're both great and it's just up to your personal preferences. Because clearly there are some people here, like Riz, who, you know, consider Time Force superior. And they you know, are timeless classics. Yes. I'm going to pretend like you didn't say that, Dacho. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Roll <that> Patrick. <laughs> you have people like Patrick who, uh, you know, consider Time Ranger to be superior. And I think both opinions are perfectly valid. Now, yeah. you know. Now, if you try to uh, come in here and tell us something a bit more egregious, like uh, Geki Ranger is better than Jungle Fury, well, then you're wrong, and you should be ashamed of yourself. But that's not what we're talking about in this. Uh, <laughs> All right, now I'm going to come How dare you take the... <laughs> it's coming, y'all. Trust me. They There are some mm-hmm. Geki Ranger fans out there that'll be like, what did you say? <laughs> yeah. But with that being said, that wraps up this uh, podcast here. Uh, we thank you guys so much for taking the time to... Uh, Listen to this. Uh, this wraps up our whole Time Force and uh, Time Ranger, um, you know, segment. And we hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Uh, if you're listening to this on Spotify and iTunes, we thank you so much. Watching this on YouTube, uh, please like the channel and subscribe. Please like the video and subscribe. And you can reach out to us at AnimeSecrets.org to give us some more commentary on uh, what you want to give or comment down below. And uh, we are looking forward to our next Sentai that we're going to be taking a look at, Gingaman. And we're also going to be doing the King Ocher finale. And we're going to be doing the, um, you know, we're going to be doing reviews on the next Sentai coming up, Boom Boomger. We're looking forward to that. We got a lot of more stuff planned for you. We had a you lot of fun here. You know what's funny? What's that? Real, real quick. We, uh, we're doing this, this is a clearly time travel podcast now because King Ocher <laughs> will come up before this even airs. <laughs> Oh, okay. Then yeah, <laughs> we're gonna be traveling. Uh, we, you know, we're from the future here. So. Yeah. <laughs> but with that uh, being said, we thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen or uh, watch this podcast. We'll see you guys next time. Whether we're, you know, when we take a look at a different Sentai, jumping into a c- completely new journey. But until that time, you guys stay safe. We love you, and may the power protect you.